Hi everyone, my name is Brenda Chetniatich and it's really an honor to present to you guys today. So before I start my presentation, I'd like to tell you about my YouTube channel. So it's called Geosan Solutions and there I talk about geospatial matters. If you're in this conference today, I know you're someone in this industry. So please support me by subscribing to my channel. The title of my project is Impacts of Land Use Changes on Landscape Patterns and Regulatory Ecosystem Services and my study area was in Taita Hills in Kenya. So land use and land cover changes, they are a major part in our ecosystem services supply and landscape functions, which we all know it's a multidimensional process that has many driving forces such as the population increase. We all know that the population keeps increasing and as our population increases it leads to many land use changes and these land use changes they show the impacts of our human activities on the land resources so it's important for us to preserve our ecosystem so as to be able to safeguard sustainable management of our land resources in these two photos here, the first shows how Taita Hills used to be very many years ago. It used to be a forested area. 70% of Taita Hills was covered by forest. But in the right photo here, this is a sample of how Taita Hills has turned into. The forest has been cut down so as to create farmland areas. As you can see here, you can see in the forest, inside the forest, there are farmland areas where people are growing their crops, they are trying to find a way of getting food, and also there are some settlements. People are coming to live here because there is shortage of land, so people are trying to find a way to survive, which makes sense, right? But however, we need to consider our ecosystem. Even though we are trying to look for ways to obtain food, we need to consider that in that process we are destroying our ecosystem. So we need to find a way in which we can still be able to get our needs, but also we are conserving the ecosystem. So my main objective was to be able to quantify these land use changes and see the impacts of that land use change to the landscape pattern and to the ecosystem services. So in my first objective, I did land use, land cover analysis where I used Landsat imagery. I did from 2002, 2011 and 2019. So I used Landsat 7 for 2002, Landsat 5 for 2011 and Landsat 8 for 2019. Then I did classification and in the end I obtained the land cover maps and then I did accuracy assessment and then did change detection. So in the end I found that the largest land use change in Taita Hills was agricultural expansion. For objective two, I use the land cover maps to be able to obtain the landscape patterns in the area. So I did that using the landscape matrix. For objective three, I wanted to calculate, to quantify the ecosystem services. So I did three ecosystem services. And as I said in my title, they're regulatory ecosystem services. So one of them was sediment retention. We have potential soil loss and also water yield balance. So I use the invest model for the sediment retention, sediment export and potential soil loss. I use the invest SDR model. That is the sediment ratio model. And then we have the water yield model, which I used to quantify the water yield balance ecosystem service. And in the end, I had the ecosystem service value maps. So after obtaining those three results, I did a regression to be able to analyze the relationship between these three things. And that led me to quantifying the impacts of these land use changes, impacts on the landscape pattern, and also impacts on the ecosystem service value maps. So some of my results were the land use land cover maps and as you can see here I had five land cover classes the forest the shrubland built up cropland and the bare land area so as you can see the green the dark green here is the forest and as you can see from 2002 2011 2019 it has been decreasing in the area while the cropland on the other hand has been increasing so as you can see cropland areas are encroaching into the forest area 
and for the landscape pattern results I, in this map you can see there are patches the edges and the perforated areas and the core areas so what this means is that as you can see from 202 to 2019 the patch areas which are in the brown color it is increasing that means the the number of patches is increasing that means the land is becoming fragmented there is landscape fragmentation which means which is caused by the encroachment because initially the forest was a continuous area but now due to the cutting down the encroachment it's turning into patches and that has reduced the continuity and that affects the ability of the forest as a natural ecosystem to provide us with the ecosystem services so that's a bad thing for the ecosystem services i have the sediment export and the boundaries you're seeing here are the watershed boundaries so i wanted to show how these ecosystem services are varying per watershed and as you can see for the sediment export it was increasing the many ecosystem many watersheds that its value of the sediment export Port is increasing with time same as water yield the water yield was reducing the ability for the ecosystem to provide us with water was reducing so after this research i concluded that there is definitely a significant relationship between land use change landscape metrics and ecosystem services also the agricultural expansion which was by 10 percent it led to the decline of forest by 15 percent due to encroachment and since forest is a natural ecosystem definitely the flow of ecosystem services declined so in the end it means that fragmentation the configuration and diversity in landscape patterns could significantly impair the provision of ecosystem services which clearly it did that so this research can be applied by land managers in exploring multiple management scenarios and their implication for ecosystem services and in our decision making and policy making it means that we have to be able to come up with policies that consider the ecosystem we have to consider the impact how does this policy affect our ecosystem and we can also use this research in land use planning when we are deciding what to develop in an area we have to consider how is it going to impact our ecosystem because we need to preserve our natural ecosystem since it's very important so that's the end of my presentation thank you so much for listening